This is why parents should believe their kids. In 2010, a 15-year-old boy started to notice that the door to his attic, which was in his bedroom, was always open. One day, when his mom's giving him a hard time about being lazy, he's like, well, you're one to talk. You always leave my attic door open. She's like, I haven't touched your attic door in months, and nobody else has either. Not easily frightened, the boy decides to leave the attic door open. And so he's laying in bed, and he kind of looks over at the door, and standing in the door frame is a figure staring right at him. He bolts, tells his parents, they don't believe him, and then six months later, they move anyway. A few years later, the boy discovers his favorite teacher actually moved into his old house. And so he jokingly asks her, you ever see any ghosts walking around your attic? Her face got completely serious, and she's like, you know, as soon as we moved in, the door to the attic kept opening. So we investigated, and we found a trap door that led onto the roof. Someone had been crawling in through that entrance and living in the attic for years. Customize your necklace any way you want. Get personalized jewelry with your name or absolutely any word. Yes, any word. Why Sun Necklace? Well, ask our 30,000 customers. Really Wear this one literally every single day. Yeah. We include an exquisite jewelry box with every order for free. You can choose between three colorways, more than 30 styles, and all of our necklaces are waterproof, which means no more green skin. Shop now with 55% off, plus free shipping. Surprise your loved ones or yourself with a truly unique gift. Link in the description. Sun Necklace, personalized for you. This is why you should be careful who you marry. Once there was a man who hated his wife, so he came up with a horrifying plan. But he would never expect that she was one step ahead. He lied by saying he wanted to fix their marriage by taking her on a vacation to a hotel near the mountains. There they went to a long hiking trail near a cliff. His plan was to push her and claim it was an accident. But this went terribly wrong. As soon as they arrived near the cliff, his wife said something unexpected. I know you hate me, but you have no idea how much I hate you. Then she revealed what she had done. Before leaving the hotel that morning, she wrote a note to the hotel manager saying she knew her husband was planning to push her off a cliff and if anything happened tell the police then she looked up at her husband and said now there's no way you'll convince anyone this was an accident horrified the husband said what accident but before he could finish his wife jumped by the time he went back to the hotel the police were already waiting to anyone who gets a period this video is for us when i was in middle school i really appreciated this teacher who would let the girls go to the bathroom whenever we wanted and the guys would complain that they had to wait 20 minutes at least after lunch so that they could use the restroom and the teacher would always remind them you guys are boys and these are young ladies and they don't always have to just relieve themselves in the restroom and i didn't even realize that that was just basic human decency for people who have periods until I got to high school. When I was a junior in high school, I was sitting in class and I felt like I was bleeding. And so I told my teacher that I had to use the restroom and he told me I couldn't go because it was the first 15 minutes of class. And I told him, it's an emergency. I really have to use the restroom. And he said, you should have thought about that at lunch. And because I'm not gonna sit here and bleed through my pants, I was like, I'm menstruating really loud in front of the whole class. And he was shocked and so uncomfortable. He started doing that thing where he tries to laugh like, uh, and all my 20 years of teaching, no one has ever told me that. And I just sat there and wondered how many girls before me had to sit in their own blood. Is it wrong for my husband to demand sexy time even though I don't want to? Disclaimer is not my story time instead of me on Instagram. My husband and I have been married for six months. Unfortunately, our marriage was arranged by our families. And so far, I have not been able to fall in love with him. I come from a very strict religion. My family and my husband's family believe that I should obey him. And it's been really hard for me to adjust to this. Before getting married, I had more freedom. But now I'm mostly home all day waiting for my husband to come home. I cook all of his meals and serve him while he's eating. And even if I'm not eating, he expects me to be sitting there with him. My husband is a very rich man, so he lets me go shopping whenever I want. But that's something I can't even do by myself. He always sends someone with me to go shopping. So I take advantage and buy really expensive designer things. Sometimes I spend $5,000 on a shopping day. This really never seems to bother him. Another thing I don't really like is that he rarely ever speaks to me. We have small talk every now and then, but we don't talk about important things, especially before we got married. We'd only seen each other a few times. I thought we'd have a really good relationship and be friends, but no. Sometimes I'll ask him what his day was like, and he just says it was fine. Other times I try to talk to him about his job, but he never really gives me a full answer. So honestly, I don't even know what he does. But my biggest problem with him is something else. He demands, you know what, sexy time. And I never really want to. I'm not in love with him and I'm not really attracted to him. On our wedding night, my family really pressured me into doing it. And it was horrible. And now whenever he wants it, I defend myself and it turns into a big fight. He even called my parents to complain, part two is- 
Is it wrong that my husband demands sexy time even though I don't want to? Disclaimers is not my story time and send me an Instagram. That's when he called my parents and complained to them that I wouldn't do it with him. He took me to my parents' house the following day. My dad was really angry with me and told me that I needed to obey my husband. I told him I never wanted to get married to begin with and that I didn't love him or was even attracted to him. My parents clearly didn't understand me. I went home and my husband basically coerced me into doing it. And it's not even like it's fun. He doesn't do anything to please me. It's all about him when we're doing it. One night he asked me to do it and I refused. He got so angry he told me that he didn't need to ask for my permission. I basically punched him in the face and since then he hasn't touched me. But then I felt so responsible and I actually apologized even though I was just defending myself. Everything's back to the way it was. I just have to do whatever he wants. All our friends think that we're incredibly happy. I couldn't take it anymore, so I opened up to one of my best friends. I told her everything that was going on, and she told me that I should just leave my husband. But with my religion and my family, it would be really hard to do that. Then she told me that I should just take on a lover. And the idea kind of stuck in my head. Let me backtrack a little. When I was in college, I had met somebody. But nothing ever happened because I knew my parents wouldn't accept him. I reached out to him on Facebook and asked him how he was. And he happened to be arriving to my city soon. I asked him if he wanted to meet up and he said yes. And what happens next is crazy. When we saw each other, we instantly fell in love. Part 3 is up. Is it wrong for my husband to demand sexy time even though I don't want to? Disclaimers in my story time with Cinnamon Instagram. When I saw my old friend, it was like love at first sight. I could tell he was so happy to see me and we talked for hours. And the only reason I was able to go was because I told my husband that I was going to hang out with my best friend. So my best friend wasn't actually even with me. After that, my friend, let's call him Rob. Rob and I hung out a few more times, and eventually I opened up to him about what was happening with my husband. I explained to him I had an arranged marriage and that I wasn't in love with my husband. He also told me that I should divorce my husband, but then he told me why. He said that since college, he's always had feelings for me. That means he's had feelings for me for three years. Well, long story short, he's my lover now, and nobody knows. Only my best friend. We see each other three times a week. I always go when my husband's at work, and I tell him that I'm going to be with my best friend. And Rob and I meet at his place, and I'm the happiest I've ever been. I know that this is totally wrong, but I'm finally living. Of course, my husband still demands you know what, but I'm able to bear it now because I know I have someone else who actually loves me. I know this can't last forever though. I wish I could just fall in love with my husband, but it's not that easy. He's always so demanding and he doesn't understand that his behavior is not normal. And I barely speak to my parents now. I've only been seeing Rob for a month, but he's got to go back home eventually. What should I do? or six i had a best friend named maggie who lived next door we would always go outside and play together one day around dinner time we saw a little girl around our age staring at us on the side of another nearby house she was extremely pale and wearing a white dress we would see her for days on end in the exact same dress and as soon as we would yell for her to come play with us she would run around to the front of her house one day we finally decided to chase after her as soon as we rounded the corner to her front yard she was gone like she had literally disappeared when we were walking back we noticed a pile of dirt next to our house in the dirt was written K-A-R-A -A with a stick next to it. We just assumed she was shy and wrote her name out for us, Kara. The next day, we saw her again and started yelling, Kara, Kara, wait. We ran after her again, rounded the corner, and saw this old couple doing yard work in our front yard. We assumed that they were Kara's parents. So we asked them, hey, where's your daughter Kara? And they were like, uh, that's not funny. And we were like, no, seriously, we've been seeing her every night. We just wanted to know if she wanted to come play with us. The old man looked at us and said, our daughter Kara got hit by a truck and died 30 years ago in front of this house. Story time on how I caught my dad sleeping with my sister, his biological daughter. Okay, so boom, let's jump right into it. So my mom passed away when I was 10 years old. Me, my dad, and sister grieved the loss of our mom slash wife and honored her as best as we could. But the loss of our mom hit our dad pretty rough. Due to the loss, for about four years, he continued to suffer from depression. But recently, my dad has been happy. The happiest I've seen him in a long time. And it kind of came out of nowhere, but of course, I was happy for my dad. I'm now 14 and my sister is 12 and everyone always says how much my little sister looks like my mom. Literally my mom's twin and mini me. I thought nothing of it but little did I know my sister looking like my mom would make my dad do some disgusting things. Like and follow for part two.
Part two on how I caught my dad sleeping with my sister. His biological daughter. Okay, so boom, like I said, after my mom passed away, my dad became depressed until a couple years later, he just wasn't. Watch part one to understand. Now I'm 14 and my sister's 12 and everyone is saying my sister looks like my mom. Literally twins, she is the mini me of my mom. And I guess my dad seen this too and he became obsessed with my little sister. He would dress my little sister up as my mom and even became way too affectionate with her. For some reason my little sister liked this attention but like I knew it was wrong. But I didn't know how far my dad would take it. One day I was in my room and I heard moaning and it sounded like my sister. And it was coming from my dad's room. So I go over there. And yeah, it's exactly what y'all think. I called and told my auntie and now my dad's in jail. We're living with our auntie and my sister's in counseling. Be safe. I have three daughters, Alyssa 18, Tessa 16, and Jenna 14. We rarely argue. She drives her sisters around and she works full time while in school. The only problem is that she can be unreliable. If you ask her to get groceries and be home at five, she'll call you at 6.30 and ask you what you wanted her to do. And she doesn't do housework without being reminded five times. She has ADHD though, so that explains it. Now, Jenna loves to argue. Jenna argues with my husband a few times a week. She's a pretty good kid otherwise. She's a straight-A student, she plays soccer and is playing softball, and she helps around the house more than both of her sisters combined. Tessa is complicated. When she applies herself, she gets straight A's extremely easy. The problem is, she never does her homework, so she usually gets B's and C's. She and I have similar hobbies, and both my husband and I love talking to her when she's in a good mood. We don't fight often, but when we do, it's very dramatic. She's been insisting that she has ADHD or some other problem since she was around 11 because she can't focus, but my husband and I think that she's just trying to get shorter assignments and extra time like Alyssa. We got into an argument the other day because she has IBD and gets infusions every six weeks. She's very strict about never pushing it back for any reason after we tried to push it back once because we were going to be in another state and she got sick at six weeks and three days. It was two years ago and she's healthier now but she still refuses to push it back. Her next infusion is scheduled for the 1st but we're going to be on vacation from the 30th to the 4th so I scheduled her infusion for the 8th. Her doctor approved it but she started yelling at me about how last time I pushed her infusion back she got sick and she isn't going to risk her health from our vacation. It became a very long and drawn out argument. When I picked her up from school, she put her headphones on so that she wouldn't have to talk to me and then she locked herself in her room. She borrowed my laptop so I looked in her backpack to see if she still had it. While I was looking, I saw passes from the school therapist. Tessa knows I don't want her talking to those therapists because people will find any reason to call CPS. Tessa admitted that she'd been seeing the therapist once a week for two years. She wouldn't look up at me from her coloring book and started crying and asked me to give it back because her therapist gave it to her for when she was having a bad day. I ended up shredding it and she hasn't left her room except for school and hasn't spoken since so I wanted to know if I was the asshole. So, am I the asshole for shredding my daughter's coloring book? Am I the asshole for walking in on my mom and her boyfriend doing the nasty on purpose to get them to stop? I'm 18 male, my mom is 39, and her boyfriend is 37. We've been on vacation abroad for three days, and as normal people, we only have one bedroom in our hotel. We also have a small lounge area, but there's no door to divide the bedroom and living room, so I can basically hear everything. The first night went fine because everyone was exhausted and just wanted to go to bed early. Last night sucked though because I could hear the bed and certain noises. I sucked it up and asked them not to move around their luggage at night. I didn't bring anything else up because I didn't want to make them uncomfortable. Am I the asshole for walking in on my mom and her boyfriend doing the nasty to get them to stop? I'm not sure if my mom actually thinks I didn't figure it out, but they did it again last night. This time I had enough and didn't want to listen to that crap anymore, so pretended to get something from my suitcase which was in their room. I walked straight in on them and they froze and pretended not to be doing it. I don't care if they do it or not, but I don't think it's too much to abstain or at least not have me hear them making love for a week during a trip abroad. In the morning, my mom was angry and demanded that I apologize for breaking their privacy. I told her I didn't have any plans of doing so because she didn't let me sleep in peace. We're passive aggressive and the boyfriend is indifferent. Can you solve this mystery? This is a story about a young girl whose brother confessed to killing their parents, but things are not as they seem. All the clues to what really happened are hidden in what I'm about to say. So one day, this young girl decided to tell her friend about the terrible tragedy. Her friend asked about what happened to her brother after the confession. She said he got arrested, went to trial, and eventually was found guilty and sentenced to death by lethal injection. During the execution, her brother never said a word. He gave no explanation and just stared at her blankly as they gave him the injection. The young girl admitted after that she couldn't eat or sleep. She had so many questions but no one left to give her answers. She tried to block out the terrible memories and suffered from depression and even amnesia. The friend suggested she go to a psychic to find some answers, so she did. She asked, what drove my brother to lose his mind? And the psychic said, your brother was always perfectly sane. The girl asked, so then why did my brother kill our parents? And the psychic said, your brother was only responsible for the death of one person. Suddenly, the girl understood everything. She broke down crying. What really happened to this family? Can you solve this mystery? I, 24, have been with my fiancé, 24, for seven and a half years. We started dating our senior year of high school. 
He has always said that he was waiting to propose until we had enough money for a wedding. I always told him that I would go to the courthouse or have a very small wedding. He was the one that wanted a big party. There was also his family drama that held him back because he was hoping to mend his relationship with his family before getting married so that they could attend. Long story short, he finally realized that his parents weren't going to be civil and they are no longer in our lives. I began anticipating him proposing after that. He finally did this past Christmas. It felt like we were finally moving forward with our lives. After he proposed, I realized I did indeed want a real wedding, though still something small. He again was trying to make it bigger than what I wanted or what we could afford. He said that we should be celebrating our lives together after all the pain and drama we had put up in our lives. So I began planning a wedding. My father works at a private golf course and they offered to use a venue for a fraction of the cost. I don't have the exact numbers yet, but they waived the site fee, $5,000. I get all the enhancements for free, which is a $2,500 value, and I don't have to have their minimum person count. We're essentially paying for the food and drink and will still be given a discounted price. On top of that, my grandparents and parents are planning on chipping in. I really imagine my fiance and I only paying about $5,000 out of pocket for DJ and attire. And I plan on having people gift money for a house instead of items for wedding gifts. To me, this wedding is important and is a dream wedding that I thought I'd never be able to afford. But my fiance thinks that we should scrap it all and focus on buying a house in the next two to three years. But that we could get married at the courthouse, even though it was his idea for a big wedding. And maybe have a wedding after we buy a house. So to me, this means that I won't have a wedding for another five-ish years and who knows if my dad will still be at this job or have this amazing offer. Am I being unreasonable for wanting this wedding? My boyfriend's become really abusive since I told him I was pregnant. In fact, I think he actually tried to unalive me, but I'm not sure. He and I started dating seven months ago. I actually suspect that he's a narcissist, but honestly, I can't be sure. That's why I'm telling my story on here to get some perspective. When we first started dating, he started love bombing me. I actually had to Google what that was because I wasn't sure. But after I did, I can definitely say that he did do that. Just after one week of going on dates, he told me that he loved me. Then basically, he just pressured me into becoming his girlfriend. He even went behind my back to speak to my parents and convince them to say yes to him. He obviously made a good impression on my parents and they convinced me to go out with him two months into the relationship everything was normal he was really affectionate loving he made time for me he would think of really creative dates but anytime i didn't say thank you for the smallest thing for example if he opened the door for me and i didn't say thank you he would get upset sometimes he'd make breakfast for me and if i didn't say thank you in a very enthusiastic way he would get really upset after the third month he started accusing me of being ungrateful and then after that he started getting really jealous he hadn't done this before so i thought it was just a phase and that it would pass but unfortunately, it did not. He started convincing himself that anytime I got a phone call, it was from some guy that I had met. Even going to the gym became a problem. He started asking me if there were any guys at the gym that I liked, or if anybody was approaching me, and God forbid if anybody looked at me on the street. He would somehow blame it on me. It got to the point where I wouldn't even want to go out with him. One day, he decided to take me to this really fancy restaurant. Everything was going really well. He was acting like a normal boyfriend. But as soon as we sat down, I started getting this weird vibe from him. It's like he was absent. He wasn't there. He stopped talking and got really quiet. When I asked him what was wrong, he told me there was a table of two guys that kept staring at me. And that it was obvious that they knew me from somewhere. And that I obviously knew them too. Where did he get this stuff? I turned around to look at the guys and they were middle-aged men who weren't even looking at me. Maybe one of them just happened to look at me when we came in. I ended up having to apologize. A few weeks ago, my period got really weird. So I decided to take a pregnancy test. At first, I told my parents and I told them that I didn't want to tell my boyfriend. My dad told me I was being silly and to just tell him, so I did. And when I did, his reaction was terrible. He told me that the baby probably wasn't his and that I was cheating on him for sure. Then he said that as soon as we could, we were going to get a paternity test. One night, he made me dinner and I got really sick afterward. I started vomiting and I hadn't had any pregnancy symptoms, so I knew something was wrong. Instead of telling my boyfriend, I actually just went straight to my parents' house. They took me to the ER and there they told me that I probably ingested something that wasn't good. Now I'm thinking he might have put something in my food. What should I do?